I'm always on the lookout for new authors that write supernatural backwoods fiction, and I'm pleased to have author Willie Dalton on the show this week. Willie grew up in the tiny town of Pound, Virginia. Even from a small age, she was drawn to things ignored by most kids. Her favorite pastime was pretending to be a fairy or a gypsy fortune teller draped in scarves using an old globe from a light fixture as her crystal ball. After several years of working in holistic health, she decided to turn to her passion of writing full-time. Her first novel, Three Witches in a Small Town, was the winner of the 2015 Jan Carroll Publishing Believe and Achieve Award. Since then, she's written another full-length novel and has had a few short stories and poems published in literary journals and anthologies. I caught up with Willie to talk about her new novel, The Dark Side of the Woods. I hope you enjoyed the interview. So, Willie, you are the author of two works of Appalachian fiction. The second one was just published recently. I was wondering if you could give us an introduction to who you are uh, for the people out there who aren't familiar with your works and tell us uh, about how you became the storyteller that you are today. Sure. Um, well, I've had multiple jobs. Um, I've worked in the natural health field. I've got a degree in natural healing and um, herbs, and I've taught yoga and done a little bit of this and that. Um, but I think the thing is, is I've always been this type of person who could have seen myself doing anything, so I could never really decide. Uh, and that's really what read, led me to writing is because uh, in being a writer, I can do anything and everything. Um, and uh, so that's and that's probably why I can't choose one particular genre to write in either. Because <laughs> like I said, I can, you know, see myself doing anything through that. My family, you know, is really what got me into, um, you know, into stories and writing. They pushed me to read a little of everything and read to me when I was little and, um, you know, really exposed me to a lot of different genres and different types of storytelling. And uh, it's, you know, it's really influenced, you know, what I've become. So what were some of your favorite books growing up? Anything Charles Dickens. Um I've read many, many times, uh, and then as I got older, um, yeah, a little older than that, I read a lot of uh, mysteries and Nancy Drew novels, and then I started reading, uh, you know, some Stephen King and then some romance books. Um, you know, I really didn't have a whole lot of particular favorites. I was always reading everything I could get my hands on, um, and then as I got older, I discovered. Uh, on the Night of the Seventh Moon by Victoria Holt, and it's been one of my long-time favorites. So you mentioned that you have a background in natural health there, and I know that in the Appalachian Mountains there's a pretty strong tradition of natural remedies using herbs and things like that. Uh, were you exposed uh, to that growing up, and did that kind of prompt your interest in natural medicine? It really did. Uh, my mom and my grandparents used a lot of different herbs for things growing up. Um, and, you know, if I was, you know, feeling sick or whatever, you know, it was, they were picking mint out of the garden. Um, you know, I always heard, you know, uh, for colicky babies, catnip and, um, you know, just a lot of simple little things. Uh, and so, uh, and one of my great grandfathers uh, was a, like a town herbalist. So I really influenced my decision to study that. That is so cool. I've uh, really enjoyed that. It comes through in your fiction, and it's really one of my favorite parts of your books. Now, with your most recent book, The Dark Side of the Woods, what inspired that story? Um, my husband and I, we were hiking over in Cumberland Gap, Tennessee, and we were on this one little trail uh, and it was just really beautiful. And the trail just kind of, you know, wound up into the mountains. And on one side of the road was this beautiful open meadow, and it was sunny, and there were wildflowers. And then on the very opposite side of the road, I mean, it was almost, you know, completely dark uh, with shadows from the trees. And there were these big rocks jutting out of the mountain. And all I could imagine was, you know, wolves or monsters kind of hiding behind those and watching. And it was really that one spot. Um, and I just stood there and walked around a little bit, and I had my whole story. That is really neat. Would you say that the landscape of the mountains there has had an influence on your writing overall? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, you know, that one spot, like I said, I got a whole book alone from that one spot. Uh, but my favorite way to get inspiration for any of my work is to get outside. That's so true. Nature really is a wonderful source of inspiration, especially when you live in such a beautiful area. Absolutely. I know yeah, for, for my writing, I love uh, driving around and, you know, sometimes it is, you know, something I see, uh, you know, in nature or uh, strange enough, like road names will kind of mm -hmm. trigger stuff for me sometimes, you know, or. Uh, Absolutely. Now, in your introduction to the dark side of the woods, I really loved how you touched on the uh, the dual nature of the mountains. Um, how, you know, you can climb up to the top of these mountains and have these incredible views you can see for miles. But at the same time, these tall mountains cast these shadows. And there are places in the shadows of the mountains that hardly see any sunlight at all. And... What do you think it is about these dark places that kind of captures our imaginations? I, I think anytime you're in darkness, and especially when you have something like, you know, a huge mountain or, you know, mountains, you know, over top of you, um, you know, and you do have to look up so high to see the sun. I think anytime you're in darkness or shadow, that's where your mind naturally goes is, you know, to darker things or, you know, depressive things. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, you know, you always want to know what's hiding in the shadows. So what's the story? What's hiding? What's lurking? What's happened here? Kind of mentality. Yeah. Now, both of your books so far have been set in small towns. And I have to say that one of my favorite lines in The Dark Side of the Woods is when the main character's mother tells her that if you go back far enough, no town is boring. Mm -hmm. And you really illustrate that well as the plot develops um, and you kind of have this layer of the modern world over the deep dark history and mythology that is the background of the small town that the story is set in um, and that's a theme that I always enjoy in my reading and I think it's because I grew up in a small town and you know I would hear people growing up saying complaining that the the town was boring that there wasn't anything to do and uh, now that I live in a larger city, I hear the same thing from a lot of the urban folks, you know, saying, oh, my gosh, you know, what could you possibly done growing up in a town that small, that sort of thing. But I'm curious to know, at what point in your life did you realize that if you go back far enough, no town is boring? Uh, well, I grew up in a really tiny town of Pound, Virginia. I mean, no stoplight, you know, nothing. And barely any shops along the streets. I mean, it's, you know, it's a through town, you know, you drive through there to get somewhere else. Um, and I always thought, you know, this is going to be the most pitiful, boring place. Um, and, you know, I talked to some older people that I knew and I would hear stories about what a happening place it was, you know, 30, 40 years earlier that, you know, I had a movie theater and all this. And then, um, once I got into writing, you know, I talked to some other people who were into storytelling and history and found out there had been all sorts of murders and scandals and all of this stuff. And I was like, in, you know, in this town? And then I've heard the same thing. You know, there's you know, so many mountain towns that I drive through daily that there's just barely anything there. And But there's all these shop fronts and all these houses. And, you know, at one time, you know, they were busy places, whether it was because of coal camps or, you know, whatever the job was at the time that had people there. Um, and they all have their stories. Um, you know, something puts the town there and there was a story behind it. And most of them, you know, most of them are not, um, you know, are not that boring. There's always good stories there. Yeah, you know, I've always thought that small towns are the perfect place for a history buff because there's so much history that isn't necessarily well known and it's so much fun to dig and find these stories on your own right there's a lot of scandals and um you know just all sorts of you know power struggles and things about getting these towns established and what happened and who was in charge and and i find it all really interesting it certainly is i, th I think we're birds of a feather in that regard i i can't get enough of that stuff um now in your writing you do such a wonderful job of so of showcasing the dialect and the culture and the landscape of Appalachia. 
Was there a point in your life where you realized that uh, this culture and this landscape that we have is unique and that it's something to be treasured? Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's something that I didn't, you know, I've always appreciated being from where I, you know, from where I am. Um, and I've traveled enough to know how unique the Appalachian Mountains are. Um, you know, they're one of the oldest mountain chains in the world and, you know, so much history and beauty. And I love anything with a supernatural element or magical element. And uh, so to me, there's something very drawing about it. Um, and the culture, you know, is very unique. Um, and while, you know, we're not I always joke, you know, we're not the south of the southern bells. I don't know, it's a lot sturdier of a culture, I suppose, and we're almost more almost more cultish in a way. You know, we will accept you once you prove yourself kind of thing. <laughs> and so I just I find it really intriguing, but the people are, you know, so good and um you know, it is, it's just so unique, um, you know, and, but it's and mainly the thing is, you know, they say, write what you know. And I mean, that's what I know. This is where I've grown up. This is the land I live on and the people I know. Uh, so I think it just naturally, you know, that's why I want to come through in my stories. Yeah. Well, you, you certainly did a good job of that um, in your writing. I, I really enjoy that element of your stories. Um, one of the other things that I enjoyed was just how visual your writing is. Um, you have some just wonderful imagery in your stories, the old diary wrapped in thorns. When I read that, I was just like, wow, that is just incredible. Um, could you point to any particular thing that was inspiration for that? Or was it just one of those things that kind of popped into your head as a writer? very much you know in writing there's the plotters and the pantsers you know you're right by the seat of your pants kind of thing and that's very much me um I let the story tell itself and the characters tell me what's going on um so you know whenever I was writing that part I was thinking okay she's got this you know journal that has very you know very private information in it how much trouble would somebody go to you know what would they do at the time if they didn't have access to a lock and uh, so that's kind of the image that I got was this journal bound in, th in thorns. And uh, I thought, you know, not many, not very many people would go to the trouble of untangling something just to read it. Um, but I did like the wild element that it gave, especially in regards to, you know, what it was about, you know. So, yeah, that was fun. Yes, it's the perfect place to put a closely guarded secret. We won't uh, spoil it for any uh, potential readers out there. Now, um, now, in regards to small towns, do you feel like it's important for people to know their local history? I think it would be ideal for people to have a general idea of, you know, the, um, you know, where their town got its start. Um, because I think it's important for people to have a sense of belonging and, um, you know, ties to their roots. Uh, but, you know, not everybody feels um, the same kind of appreciation for where they grew up. And I know I've, you know, certainly been to other cities and been very interested in their local history more than, you know, where I live. Um, so I think it's important just to study um, what interests you. But I think a general idea, I mean, I think if you live in a town, you should have a general idea of where it came, where it got its name and, you know, the people who founded it and, and that sort of thing. Sure. I think it helps you appreciate where you are a little more. It does. Right. Now, um, now something else that I wanted to talk to you about was uh, something that I saw that you said in another interview that really struck a chord with me. Uh, you said that you prefer creepy books to horror movies, and I'm the same way. And uh, I used to think that I was just a weirdo, but this is actually a theme that, um, that I've noticed amongst uh, other people that I've talked to and some other authors that I've interviewed. Uh, Richard Gleaves, the author of the Jason Crane series, which revisits the legend of Sleepy Hollow. It's kind of the same way. And um, I wondered if uh, you had any thoughts on, to, on maybe why it is that you prefer scary books to scary movies. Well, I think in spooky books, um, you know, you get more of the story, whereas in movies, it's more about the scare. Um, and I think when you read a book, you your senses kind of fill any gaps. Um, so you're getting all of it. You're, you know, reading, but you can also, you know, imagine that you're hearing what's going on or feel what the character's feeling uh, versus just, you know, watching it with your eyes and, you know, listening to the actress or, you know, actors. And um, I think you just get a lot more into it and a lot more out of it. 
from the story because you have more background and more detail. You're inside either the victim's head or, you know, the killer's. And um, you just get more from all sides. I don't think anything puts you in the moment uh, like a book. That's true. I, I do think you get some depth there that's hard to accomplish in film. Right. In that same interview, you mentioned that you felt like your own writing was drifting more toward the, the spooky. Do you have any plans for what comes next in your writing career? Any uh, novels in the shoot? Yeah, I'm working on the first book in what's going to be a series, um, at least a three-part series right now. Um, it's, gonna, it's called The Girl Who Digs Graves. Um, and as the title kind of gives away, it's about a young woman who's a grave digger. Um, and it's all about her perceptions of death and what happens um, and what's waiting for us on the other side. Uh, I guess it would fall into um, horror or even paranormal, rom- paranormal romance since there's, since there's so many subgenres now. That sounds great. I'm excited to hear that you're working on a series. I'll uh, have something to look forward to. Um, why don't you tell people where they can find you online and where they can get your books? Absolutely. Um, my website is authorwilliedalton.com, um, and there's links there that will take you to my blog, to my Facebook page or Instagram, and to Amazon where you can order my books. And hopefully they will both be on Audible um, in just a few months. That's great. Well, Willie, thanks so much for being willing to do this. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this story. For more like it, head on over to theweeklyholler.com and sign up for our free email newsletter.